Flash games. We all know them, we all love them, and we're all strangely endeared to our own personal favorites, spawning Papa Louie fanfiction and Fireboy and Water Girl feature films. Okay, that's not confirmed or anything, but I think we all know what really inspired it. But what if you don't want to play Shark Boy and Lava Girl or whatever, or you do want to make pizzas, but not boring boy pizzas with dumb boy ingredients and a boy man as the main character, but cute feminine pizzas in a kitchen that's pink with little puppies dancing on screen and a random shiny millennial woman in an awful outfit as the main character. You know, all the regular girly things? Well, then you would of course turn to not just any regular regular old Flash game, but girly Flash games. Girly Flash games are pretty self-explanatory. All the fun of a regular Flash game, but now in a cute girly package. Except they're not quite that simple. Girly Flash games are a delicate balance of the color pink, whimsy, and questionable quality, and with this formula, they've created an entire online legacy and genre of their own. Think cooking games, gardening games, and of course, the glorious dress-up games. The only real requirements to fit the genre are feature a typically feminine activity or theme, have something like butterflies or flowers thrown into the mix, or even just a girl, and suddenly, that typical boring flash game is transformed into something magical. Or at least, that's how it felt when I was younger. And you know what else is magical? learning a new language, and this video's sponsor Babbel helps you do just that. Like a lot of Americans, I learned Spanish in high school, but since moving to Australia I've had less chances to practice and I've lost a lot of what I knew. But Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world, and it has been perfect for brushing up on my Spanish and getting back into the swing of things. Babbel lessons are designed by real language teachers and actually teach real-world uses, so you can have practical conversations, instead of just asking where the library is. Why is that the one thing we've all retained from school? I've learned useful phrases like taking and asking for directions, which is so helpful for getting around when traveling. Nosotros vamos a la estación. Barreto y en la siguiente esquina, gira a la izquierda. Nice. And Babbel has a few different subscriptions to choose from, including a lifetime subscription, so I can choose whatever works best for how I use the app. If you're looking for an all-in-one tool for language learning, click the link in the description to get 60% off of your Babbel subscription. Start having real conversations in a new language. Thanks to Babbel for sponsoring this video, and now, back to girly gaming. In the early 2000s, I spent a lot of time on commercial classics like Barbie.com, PollyPocket.com, and MyScene.com, basically everything under the EverythingGirl.com umbrella, the combined Mattel property powerhouse that ruled a large portion of my childhood. The games on these sites and others like them were definitely the blueprints for the girly games in later years. They had simple concepts, pretty colors, and themes of friendship, fashion, or something overly cute like babies and animals. As much as I could not get enough of watching Polly Pocket grow shrooms in her backyard, or helping Barbie care for animals sushi train style at the vet, these games did kind of run their course for me after a while. In retrospect, I think the main threat to the longevity of these branded games for me is that they were commercialized and selling a product. Even though I did love Polly Pocket and, of course, chewing on her clothes, there's only so much I could get out of a few lackluster games where she was the main mascot. Featuring characters from the brands and new toy sets with a not-so-subtle trademark symbol front and center was sure to bring in more traction to the website and sales overall, but it didn't always do much for actually making the game engaging. I think that the lack of variety is what eventually drove me to the less commercial and more freeform option, the girly flash game sites where toy brands and IP-based websites that happened to have a few licensed games on them were typically made to promote a product, girly game sites existed only to invite in more players for that sweet, sweet website traffic and AdSense. And if you couldn't tell by the name, girl game sites clearly had something different to offer from the other typical Flash game hosting sites like Addicting Games or Miniclip. 
If you run a search for boys flash game site or something similar, you'll just get a bunch of popular or generic sites that aren't really made specifically for boys. They might even have some girly games in the mix, and they're more gender neutral if anything. But girls flash game site will show you tons of results of these sites that cater specifically to a demographic that wants games with more of a feminine touch or more accurately, just a bunch of random games that look like they might have something to do with fashion, fairies, or Viggo Mortensen. You know, classic girly stuff. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. One, two, three, peppy. Game girly. Dress up who? Girl games club? Put the word girl in the title or some other feminine sounding word or phrase and you've got yourself a domain that's the perfect place to host everything relatively girly pop and slay, as the kids say. These sites were flashy, lawless, pink and purple havens full of games of any genre, any unlicensed media, and any premise that might have a chance of reining in kids with unsupervised computer time online. Where traditional video games tended to be full of licensed characters and more arcade-like gameplay, girly flash games tended to be the exact opposite. More simple concepts with random characters and less of a purpose or end goal so that they could be replayed endlessly. Boy-centric or gender-neutral sites just couldn't handle the sheer power that came with hosting ads of 2000s pop culture girlies in the sidebar and sensual Edward Cullen dress-up experiences. I guess he doesn't look that sensual, but I feel like Edward as a character is always one step away from sliding into someone's metaphorical DMs. I couldn't tell you an exact date of when girl game sites first started appearing, but two of the most prominent of these sites appeared, as far as the Wayback Machine can tell me, in 2007, further proving my point that 2007 was a cultural legend for all that it offered. These two websites created classic girly flash game standards, genres, and strange pink-colored memories that would last for years to come, and they were Girls Go Games and Games to Girls. When it comes to flash gaming, it's generally true that it doesn't usually matter which website you prefer. You'll probably at least find all of the same popular titles between each site, and everything else in between is good enough anyway. This was also true for girl game sites, so no matter which was your favorite, you were sure to get a very similar experience every time. Despite how similar they all were though, I still for some reason harbor some loyalty to my personal girly site of choice as a kid. Games 2 Girls. It even claims to be the first online girl game site, and does show up a few months before Girls Go Games on the Wayback Machine, though I don't know that I would call either of those very valid sources. I know that Girls Go Games was apparently way more popular and frankly more polished overall, though as a kid I for some reason had some made up beef with it and decided that the opposite was true. They even both had very similar layouts for a while during their peak, as did a lot of the other sites, but to me, Games 2 Girls, the unofficial first online girl game site, maybe, was superior, and this was where I did almost all of my flash gaming for a large chunk of my girlhood. So just a disclaimer, if I don't mention one of your favorite flash games that you can't believe I forgot or never heard of, it was probably hosted on Girls Go Games, and I probably just didn't play them because I was doing real gaming on the superior girly website, okay? I mean, just look at that font, that color scheme, and of course, the games. I never really understood what Games 2 Girls as a title meant though. Is it Games 2 Girls? Like, four girls? Games 2 Girls? Like, these games are very too much girls. And that's why they're on the site? Is it Games 2, the sequel, expressed directly to and for the girls? I never really got it. But it doesn't have to be a thing that you get, because Games 2 Girls is a thing that you play on, and as much as it is pretty to look at, it's got Games 2 Girls. You might notice right away that there are what looks to be localization or just general translation issues with some of the titles, leading to games with just vague one-word descriptors like Career, September, and Hamburger. <laughs> though sometimes these were just the actual titles of the game. Either way, I didn't really care as an eight-year-old just looking for something to fill my computer time with while taking a break from Webkins. Even though Hamburger does sound like a great time and cooking and food-based games were definitely popular, dress-up games were undeniably the core essentials of Games 2 Girls and all the other sites like it. 
The premise is usually just to dress up your doll in whatever way you think is best. There's sometimes extra features like adding makeup and hair design or some kind of goal or time limit, but it's typically just mixing and matching cute outfits until you exhaust all of your options and get bored. And it makes sense why they were so popular. Aside from fashion being well-liked among a feminine demographic in general, dress-up games are arguably some of the easiest games to make, and because of that have a wide range of themes and levels of quality. True dress-up game lovers know all too well that feeling of disappointment when you click on an interesting game only for there to be like 10 clothing options total that don't even snap into place. Horror quality dress-up games were also common because making a game could be so simple. Just take some kind of theme or character, create a doll and some assets, give it a name that will get some clicks, and that's basically it. See? It's so easy that even I made one. This is totally real, by the way. Uh, you can play it right now if you want. The link's in the description. Feel free to send me all of your dressed-up dream jellies on Twitter. And actually, the name for a dress-up game wasn't even all that important. It didn't have to be overly descriptive. Dog, male, insert random girl name here. Which made clicking around on different games on a girly flash site always a toss-up of if the game would be a dress-up or not. You think Witch in the City is going to be some magical RPG type adventure game? No, it's dress-up. Oh, you thought Ice Skater would let you play as an ice skater and do sick tricks? It's actually still dress-up. Sleep time? Dress-up. Animal Mania? Dress up. Free? Dress up. Tree? Dress up. Cooking show banana pancakes? Actually, that one is exactly what it sounds like. But the point still stands. And any of these either very vaguely named or weirdly specific titles could vary wildly between each other depending on their overall theme. There were the anime and East Asian inspired games that tend to have pretty detailed designs and features with clothes that are trendy and frilly and dress up subjects that are cutesy, overly shiny, and have huge foreheads. I know that's a pretty common feature of this sort of anime art style, but it still weirds me out. One of my favorites in this category was a Games 2 Girls original series called Star Stylin' that had pretty generic looking anime girls that I assume are supposed to be like pop stars or something similar, though playing these back now I'm not entirely sure why I liked them so much. I think it had a bit to do with the variety of choices overall and probably the options of epic punk and emo themed clothing that undoubtedly planted the seeds of my own eventual emo phase I'd have later on. I mean, just look at that fit. Avril Lavigne who? Speaking of emo, following a specific fashion or theme is another definitive category of dress-up game, though it is very broad. Really, any reason to wear clothes, place to wear them, or type of fashion was fair game for a theme. There was certainly no shortage of emo and scene dress-ups, which, while they might seem a bit dated now, were very relevant in the years they were released, and I thought they were unironically really cool and they're not cringe at all, okay? I don't think pop culture relevance is a good enough excuse for creating emo baby, though. Any other variation of the setting the doll is placed in or dressing for, like Christmas with friends or Sunday brunch. I love the blatant my scene ripoff here. The theme of the clothing, like panda costumes or short boots. Some kind of occupation, like policewoman dress up or weather news, or any other generic descriptor like my bags or he is so cute are all commonplace among the wide range of dress up games. I feel like fantasy dress ups could fit in this category too, but they also have so many variations that I personally separate them into their own group. Mermaids, elves, centaurs, witches, vampires, fairies, the list goes on. I was definitely partial to the fairy ones when I was younger, and I always had a habit of making the most, like, edgy and evil looking fairies I could think of. I don't know, just to look into my dark and twisted reality. One of the strangest yet most infamous types of dress-up games, though, has to be those that are themed around celebrities. These functioned the same as any other dress-ups, but instead of some generic girl or shiny anime cutie, you were dressing up a celebrity. Maybe I'm the only one that finds these strange, but thinking back on it now, I can only think of how weird it must feel to be someone like Lady Gaga or Miley Cyrus and see tons of games where you're standing half naked in an awkward pose for young children to dress up on their family computer. 
and all just be wearing that outfit? Don't get me wrong though, I definitely played a bunch of these myself as a kid, so I recognize that I perpetuated their existence, but it still just feels a bit weird in retrospect. At least the cartoon and animated celebrities, if you could call them that, I guess, weren't modeled after real people, though I do still feel a little uncomfortable seeing Ernie from Sesame Street in his underwear. The fact that some variations of different dolls tend to look either very uncanny and off-putting, or just completely unlike their intended celebrity, also does not really help make them any less strange, like this one. Can you even tell who this is supposed to be? Here, I'll give you a hint. And while many young kids may tend to want to just dress up their favorite singer or movie star because they're a big fan and like their style, things also dip into the weird side when taking into account how many of these could be used as an almost voyeuristic view of someone that kids find attractive or have a crush on. It's probably not that deep considering these games are intended for kids, but I still feel like it's worth mentioning. Maybe because I feel a little guilty that I spent a little too much time on Joe Jonas dress up at the club edition when I was younger. Speaking of Joe Jonas, there are way more male celebrities that appear in their own themed games compared to other dress ups that tend to usually only feature boys in a couples package or boyfriend maker. Obviously. Because dressing up boys is boring, but dressing up your favorite hottie superstar crush is fun. I do feel like this further proves my theory that some of these games were partly intended to give the targeted young girl demographic something to ogle at. Aside from their questionable uses, I find celebrity dress-ups very interesting just as little pieces of 2000s history, because depending on the person that's featured, and of course what they're wearing, these games just blatantly date themselves. Celebrities like Ashley Simpson, Ashton Kutcher, Pete Wentz, Hilary Duff, and Snooki have all generally fallen from relevancy since the release of their dress-up games, yet they remain forever famous on girly gaming sites. And I think that's beautiful. But dress-up games are not the only kind of girly game that exists, because girls obviously care about more than just their favorite celebrities and fashion. They also love cooking, too! I say that as a joke, but I do think that cooking games are probably the second most popular genre of girl games. Whatever the secret ingredient is that also flavors games like Cooking Mama and Papa Louie's own masterpieces seems to apply to pretty much any game that has to do with cooking and serving food to always make it a good time, even if the games themselves are not always that great. Flash games as a general rule, because they're free and often independently created, can really have such a wide range in quality. And like with the dress-up games, not all cooking games are created equal. Sometimes you'll be the manager of a whole restaurant and filling orders with some pretty detailed gameplay, like one of my childhood favorites, Pinky's Pancakes. A lot of times, though, you'll be limited to making just one specific type of food. Which isn't always a bad thing when you get some hands-on Cooking Mama-esque steps to follow a recipe, but sometimes a game will just play canned animations in place of anything involved or frankly exciting so that it's barely a game at all. And I don't know why it's funny to me to think of someone logging onto the family computer after a long day of school, heading to games2girls.com, and playing their very favorite game, Mixed Bean Soup. It just sounds silly, even though I'm guilty of the exact same thing. Where are all my other soup heads tonight? Brother, this guy stinks! Okay. But even when the game is a little lackluster or only about cooking soup, I'd say the general consensus is that cooking virtual food is always going to be fun overall, and I played the hell out of these two. Cooking is only one type of simulation game that exists, though. There are plenty of others that usually simulate some type of girly job, like gardening, laundry, waitressing, hairdressing, and caring for babies. Or whatever creature you'd call this thing. And of course, who could forget the iconic online pet care games that walked so Nintendogs could run? These job simulators usually tend to be some type of Diner Dash style management game where you have to fill orders and keep customers, or babies, <laughs> happy, which I personally tend to always have fun playing, even without the girly title. 
I always loved to play cafe waitress and one that was simply called haircut, which I doubt was the fully translated name, but it got the point across anyway. Both of these are actually not all that exciting when playing them now, but they somehow entertained me for hours when I was younger because job sims just scratch a certain itch in my brain. I wish real jobs were this fun. <laughs> Designing games were also pretty popular on girly sites because like dress-ups, they were freeform and generally let you be creative in whatever way that you want. Basically anything else beauty related like makeup, nails, and hair, which sometimes featured even more celebrities, fashion designing, coloring, room decorators, and plenty of scene creators fall into this category. I loved playing something related to designing a super cool bedroom or house and imagine myself living in it, which went in tandem with my childhood habit of drawing crazy elaborate maps of my dream mansion with my friend at school so that we could just have the blueprints ready to go for when we're 16 or whenever you buy a house and ask the builders to please paint the pool pink and staff my in-house McDonald's with Zac Efron on the cash register. I'm going to retroactively blame my scene room decorator for that one. Aside from tons of very feminine games that clearly lean into stereotypes and glamorous bean soup recipes, there were of course other games on girly flash sites that were more like your run-of-the-mill flash games like escapes and platformers, leaning towards an arcade-like style. These were sometimes girl-ified to make them more appealing, like Charger Escape that's about transforming a cute horse into a magical pegasus. Sorry, spoilers. Cats in Love that's about, well, cats that are in love. Or just this god-awful, unlicensed, Bratz Kids Move Objects game that's barely even a game I could feel my brain melting while playing this. Also, why is it so hard? But compared to something like dressing up a tween Justin Bieber, most of the arcade type games, or really anything that wasn't about cooking or dress up, tended to not lean as girly or strange. Nope, nothing weird going on here at all. I'm just, I'm just helping the horsey escape. Only normal girl stuff happening, nothing to see here. <sighs> yeah, okay, we'll talk about the kissing games. While kissing and romance games are not featured exclusively on girly flash sites, I would argue that the long-standing trope of romance in female-oriented media makes games in this category fit right in. The goal of these games is usually to hypnotize as many lovers as you can with some weird zapping magic, or kiss someone as much as possible in some secretive setting without getting caught. I honestly wouldn't have so quickly ruled these games as girly games if I hadn't seen and of course played them so much myself on various girl game sites. I'm living proof that young kids will not only see their appeal, but also nervously play them, hoping no one will come in while you're listening to dubious kissing sounds on the speakers that are turned all the way down to low. There are so many variations of these, even including one about a squirrel romance, but the basic premise is almost always the same. I'd recommend this great video by Lee Speaks that I linked in the description if you want to hear more about this weird genre. She has a great analysis and dives a little deeper into the flirty rabbit hole. As a clear girly flash game enjoyer, I can personally say that, for the most part, these games usually did whatever they were trying to accomplish, whether it was promoting toy brands, interesting kids in cooking, winning over new celebrity fans, teaching young girls about squirrel love. They all did their jobs well and got their point across. But a lot of the games and genres I've gone over are actually pretty dated now, and not only because of their age or studded belts and scene hair, but also because there are new standards and trends among girly flash games, and they're unfortunately just bizarre, and I'm not sure at all what they're trying to accomplish. You'll of course still find dress-ups and cooking games on modern sites, but you'll also find tons of games centered around tasks like treating patients as a doctor, giving facials at a spa, and of course, taking care of babies. And sure, that sounds on par with all the other games we've covered so far, except these are not really that innocent. Doctor games include open heart surgery, spa sims feature cleaning facial wounds, and games where you care for babies are now more often about birthing babies. You know, normal, girly things. This 
weird trend of games that include gross, disturbing, or other shock value content are a pretty recent phenomenon, and they've all but taken over every new and existing girly flash game site. I really can't begin to understand the appeal of these very strange types of games from a child's perspective. I get being drawn to things that might be taboo or that you want to learn more about, but these seem to be taking it a step in a weird direction. I totally had a strange curiosity for medical procedures phase, from watching Grey's Anatomy behind the couch when my mom wasn't looking, but playing something like an Ed Head's virtual hip replacement surgery that's educational and non-graphic definitely seems a little bit different than Hello Kitty tonsil surgery that's full of growths and a rainbow of unidentified bodily fluids. Why are they always so disturbing and gross? Is it oddly satisfying? Does it add to the realism? Is this the next evolved level of toilet humor? And why does it have to be Hello Kitty that has tonsillitis? I don't even think she has tonsils. Hello Kitty is only one of the characters that you'll see involved in these unusual games, as featuring some sort of popular licensed character is an overwhelmingly common element, seemingly to garner as many clicks as possible. Kid favorites like Disney Princesses, Monster High Ghouls, Spongebob, MLP Ponies, and Peppa Pig are all stars of their very own scuffed online flash games, ranging to anything from lice control to liposuction. Also, a lot of the time they're also pregnant. Huh? Their strange ailments and injuries are healed with a range of treatments from silly stuff like insecticide and magic wands to weirdly accurate and graphic surgeries and procedures. And guess what? You even get to dress them up still at the end of their treatment. I love a two-for-one special. Real-life celebrities are featured too, though it's less dress-up Ashley Tisdale and more Pop Zane Malik's pimples. There are fan-favorite characters that appear way more than the rest, though, which have to be Minions and, of course, Anna and Elsa from Frozen. Or rather, copyright-free Ice Queen and Ice Princess, unfortunately unrelated to the 2005 Disney movie. The Frozen obsession among kids is yet another weird trend that I just cannot wrap my head around, especially when it escalates from just having a favorite Disney character to delivering their virtual babies. Or even zombie babies? As much as I feel a little weird about having played celebrity dress-up games when I was younger, I have to wonder how the kids online today will feel about having played injured Elsa pregnant with twins <laughs> when they're older. It almost feels weirdly dystopian, in a way. It's not like Flash games were ever recognized as a reputable source of kids' entertainment before, or that they never contained anything graphic or inappropriate. But where a handful of games like Squirrel Love and Dress Up Adam Lambert were a little goofy among hundreds of other more normal games, Dora Sunburn Care and Peppa Pig Bathroom Cleaning are now the new norm, and are just a few examples out of hundreds that are just like them. It's all very indicative of the current state of online culture and the information age, where it's not uncommon for children to just be handed the family Wi-Fi password as soon as they're able to tap around on their own personal iPads, ultimately leading to just an overload of exposure and information that desensitizes them and leads them to playing minion pregnancy games between watching skibbity toilet videos. Again, I'm not going to act like I had the most innocent online experience as a kid and never consumed media that probably wasn't the best for my still developing brain. The main difference now just seems to be that these games are intentionally exploiting the online free reign of modern kids in a way like never before, and it's really unfortunate. All that being said, the idea of kids having less than ideal experiences online is a pretty nuanced topic that spans far beyond weird Frozen games, so I won't get too deep into it. And I guess, at the end of the day, playing Elsa Gets Inked and giving her an Olaf tattoo isn't the worst thing for kids to be spending their time on, all things considered. I will say, though, that this new wave of girly and children-oriented games online has definitely given me a new perspective when thinking about my own internet gaming habits from when I was younger, and it all makes me feel even more nostalgic for the flash gaming of old. Dress up games gave me more of a love for fashion and self-expression. The job sims and management games prepared me for the real world. Um, kind of. And the cooking games made me realize that mixed bean soup actually sounds kinda good. Where would I be without you, girly flash games? 
And if you're feeling nostalgic too, it's actually pretty easy to visit your favorite old Flash hosting site using the Wayback Machine and play some of your favorite games with the help of a Flash emulator. Squirrel love for all! Or, you know, dress up games and stuff, that's fun. I hope you all have tons of fun playing games too, girls. <laughs> See what I did there? Hi, welcome to Jelly TV, where I shout out a video that I think deserves some love. Keeping on theme with girly gaming, I recommend watching The Life and Death of Gendered Video Games by Melody No Surname. Melody does a great job getting deep into the analysis of how gendered gaming has evolved over time and explains what it really means to girls go games. She includes a lot of super interesting details about the video game industry, its marketing, and niche points in its history, and the editing style is so polished, involved, and funny, and her PNG tuber is so cute all of which make it a really fun and engaging watch. A huge thank you to Daniel E from ABQ, Kevin Evans, Brett Morgan, Bunzo, Vindicano and Irise, Hayden Campbell, Johan Ake, Lillipuff, Lou, Lucy Likes Tegan and Sarah, Louisa, Mark Kent, M. Wee, Oliver E, Paper Sam, Pharma Mags, Pixel Puppy, Shaples, Starbit Illustrations, Steely Dan Rather, Theodore Nicolaelius, Vivian Valencia, and the rest of my patrons for supporting me. I've created each of you your very own girly flash game on the brand new site Dream2Jelly. It's definitely a real website and these are all real games and not just made up thumbnails. Please believe me and do not look it up. <laughs> 